upper class. It was restricted to the upper class. You notice that Jesus worked, he did his healings. He was one of the most successful healers in history. But he, 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 he worked with the poor. He healed the poor. And this was something never had been done. Uh, so that I just I think I want to give you that little lead and see where you run with it. <laughs> <laughs> there was a process that was practiced by the Essenes who had an intimate relationship with Jesus called the paradosis. How many people have heard of that? The paradosis, uh, when you break the words down, para and dosis, means to transfer power of God. And in the, in the paradosis, the master would transfer a portion of his own power or ability to the shila or the student. And in the Essene tradition, that's how the upper level teachers transferred their abilities to the entry level initiates, Jesus being an entry level initiate at one point, who later became a master. The process of the paradosis was something that was strictly hidden because they knew that if it was something that was found out and widely known, the authorities would hunt them down. So the Essenes lived in cloistered areas. They lived in uh, very close communities. And they taught that the paradosis not only transferred power, but it transferred knowledge. And so that with the transfer of power and knowledge, it supercharged the ability of the initiate to receive the power to heal, to raise the sick, the dead, to heal the sick, and to become, quote unquote, the master at maturity. So there is a model in the Essene tradition and many other traditions. In the particular, this is called the paradosis. So I'm very familiar with that. Any others before we go on? Yes. I would like to take the previous comment one step further because I am aware of and I also practice from other traditions which state or you know have the premise that the healing ability uh, it's more of a folk tradition and it has the the premise that the healing ability is really innate within all of us and you don't really need an initiation you just need to be shown what to do or to be helped to remember what to do and I've seen cases and worked with cases where young children uh, can learn or be shown these simple techniques and their he healing is much more powerful than us adults who have to give up years of Western conditioning mm -hmm. Well, healing is certainly something that can be taught. And one of the things that I used to do before I started doing uh, this sort of teaching is professional astrology. And one of the things that you notice when I did a study in a book called Signs of Psychic and Spiritual Ability, and I compared um, the birth configuration of planets from people who were professional healers to people who were born with quote unquote normal healing abilities. And what you find is that people who are professional healers, when you do controls for those groups, professional healers have special planetary alignments that show up more often than they should in their charts. But the really interesting thing is, when those special planetary alignments show up just on a normal basis, anybody that practices healing can do them. So that there seems to be something in our space, in our energy, that can pass through our bodies, and most of us are totally unconscious and unaware of it, that we can take advantage of and use. And quite often in these ancient noble classes, a person was given a title or a rank. So they weren't necessarily born into it. And the power of the ability was something that the person was then made privy to. For instance, a person can be given Mufkusti or manna, and all of a sudden their abilities raise up to a great level. So it doesn't have to be something that you're born with. It's something that we all have an innate ability to bring out. I wasn't born with, for instance, a high degree of healing ability. But when Ma did her thing, that all changed, for instance. Yes. Um, I have a couple questions for you. Um, do you take the uh, monatomic gold, well, the ruthenium and the palladium groups. And if you do, then how do you get the energy from the sun, if that's in fact how you get energy? And the next question is... That's three questions. 
Well, I've got a couple <laughs> more. I've got one more. And if you get this power, can it be used for bad as well as good? So you have to have some sort of purity on the spiritual level to be able to do it? That's my question. Okay. Excellent questions, by the way. One of my first and greatest teachers was a man by the name of Gene Savoy. Anyone ever heard of him? Gene Savoy. Gene Savoy was the model for Indiana Jones. He was an archaeologist, a professor, who studied the ancient Incan and Mayan uh, solar cultures. He was an expert. He died last year. He was an expert on the solar cultures and how they used ancient implements to take solar energy into the body. Also, he studied their mana, their solar filters, and he discovered that there are a number of different types of energy that you can take in from the sun. There's sephirotic energy, which is positive creative energy, and there's glyphotic energy, which is destructive. You can use the energy to hurt individuals or to help individuals, depending on what your orientation is for the use of the energy. So, in these traditions, he discovered that there were dark adepts, people who, for whatever reason, could be used by the ruling elite to carry out their negative intent. And there were also light adepts, or white adepts, who could be used for healing and other purposes. Both were employed by the ruling elite. It is possible, when you learn to take in sunlight, and you learn to use the right sorts of platinum group elements, that your body can learn to store this information and energy, and you can begin to use it depending on what we call your sonin. The sonin is your innermost vibration. It's the vibration that defines who you are. You can call it your vibe. It's what people know you by. When you enter into a room and people know you, they'll say, oh, hi, how are you? Or, hmm, here he comes depending on what your energy is. So to answer your question, yes, I do take in platinum group elements, and yes, I do take in sunlight. We'll take one more and then we'll move forward. I've uh, witnessed uh, a number of instant healings over uh, many years, and uh, so far you're talking about the healer. And in witnessing these, I've even been able to uh, see films of them after they've had an instant healing and you can almost see in some of the people's minds that they're just going pocket 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 and they're they're throwing that healing out even though they've had a, a overt uh, physical healing do you, do you have any comments on the preparedness or the recipient of the healing <clears throat> some people well since I changed my medical practice to a healing practice, I've noticed several things about he healing energy. When some people come to you for a healing, they don't really want to heal. What they really want is to you, for you to verify why they're sick and to give them a way to wrestle with their guilt. Some people, actually, when they come to you, want you to fail so that they can legitimately die. Some people come in, they want to get better, they want the healing energy to work, and they want the disease to go away. I find that that's true about one time in five. What I see quite often is that as humans, and especially in the Western society, we are trained in guilt. We're trained in anxiety, and we're trained in sadness. And when we have something bad happen to us, Quite often we see or we think or people think that it's something that we have coming. And they'll find some associated trauma in life or something that they did or something that was done to them or something that happened around them that will justify the problem. Now, and this is my own estimation, about one time in five, there are people that will accept healing energy and you can see miraculous things happen about, around them where the problem will go away almost instantly. Another one time in five, a person will allow the healing to work more quickly than usual, but not instantly. About two times...